day from Seattle, Washington. This is the National Football League. Distance. There are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one, and we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Seattle Seahawks. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. First carry now for Dalvin Cook. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Building offense. We can't have that. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Big hold to the 30. Open here, Adam Thielen. And finally brought down at the 34-yard line. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Time to go to work. Let's go. Boy, Dalvin Cook is so explosive in the open field. He's not a small guy either, but once he gets those legs churning, look out. And there's an old chestnut of an expression called getting on your horse. And I hate to use it, but I'm going to right here because it absolutely applies. How about the head of steam he had behind him? And he was absolutely galloping downfield. That was something to see. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. From the gun, he'll hand this off. Six-yard game gets him right around the 43. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. Throwing his cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Cousins gives way to Cook. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Now Cook. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Cousins from the gun on third. Flush to his right. He can run for it, and he will. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 in the first. Now that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the 5-yard line. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll run with Cook. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. Second and goal from the one. It's Cousins on the sneak. And he is over the line for another rushing touchdown. 
Is he a quarterback or is he a tailback? Kirk Cousins keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was capped off by the quarterback sneak for six. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. But it's going to be second down. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Five yards, and that means they come up short as they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, the game the underneath stuff, you got to go and make the tackle right away. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. A first down throw for Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play go. of this first quarter. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. First down, here's the run with Cook. And some room to work. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him. And once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, he's just going to keep right on going. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Cousins. 
to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Well, in a gain of a couple, the defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. The Seattle defense, they haven't broken yet. Coming up here on a third and goal situation. From the gun, here's Cousins. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. Boy, such a good drive. You'd hate to have it end in three. Do you think about going for it? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that they've moved the ball so well should lead you to the decision that maybe we should go for it right here. Also, as a head coach, show some confidence in your team. Let them know you think they can go get it. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Well, they took it all the way to the one, but in the end, opt for three. Just doesn't sound right, does it? If you get all the way down to the one yard line, isn't that supposed to be a play in the end zone that culminates in a touchdown for your team? <laughs> and per usual, it felt like the guys on the sideline wanted to go ahead and go for it. Of course they did, but of course head coach, it defers back to him and he made the decision. Let's get three out of this, make sure we get some points. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. On third down, Wilson. He's going to look deep for more. He's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that's how you convert on third down with an explosive gain of 34. On first down, Wilson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Wilson's throw caught by Metcalf. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a gain of six. Brings up third and 11. From the gun, it's Wilson. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, your live conditions, live right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice, where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. 
Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Second and three from the nine. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Closed quickly. It helped force the incompletion. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Uh, here's a running play now for Thielen. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stay home, and they'll stop him behind the line. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Bailey's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Take over first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity. Now they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes This is caught inside the 15. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. That is caught inside the five. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Again, Wilson looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Second down and goal. Wilson to the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatch this time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Russell Wilson on target to DK Metcalf. And the Seahawks have made this a one-score game. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. And it's actually been out of the backfield, handing the ball off where they've had a lot of success. So if you're the quarterback, do you just maybe say, you know, maybe this isn't my day. Our running game's going so well, you just continue to lean on that? I agree. That's exactly what you do. And you have to kind of take your ego and put it aside. Because you always think your next throw is going to be your best throw, right? Your next play is going to be your best play. Lean on what's working for you right now. That should help carry your team to victory if things keep going in the direction that they are. Yeah, because the formula has in the lead currently. Defense. 
little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes and, out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. Cousins now to throw on first down. Looking for his tight end, Rudolph, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. Got a potential turning point as he'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at the 47-yard line. After the interception, here's Wilson sliding out of the pocket. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So a late turnover leads to a quick drive, and in turn, that quick drive leads to three points. So someone makes a mistake. But how about the other side learning from that mistake, taking care of the ball, and making sure they put some points on the board? Well done. So we've hit halftime. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Seahawks 10. Dan Bailey to kick off four minutes later. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. This is DJ Reed returning. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Come on, come on, at their own 21-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. Well, they always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. 11 yards there, first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Now Wilson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver, that'll bring up second down. It's now second and ten. <laughs> to throw again, Wilson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, but now it's third down. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. <laughs> to throw on third down. Wilson, flushed out right. He may try and run for this. Russell Wilson. That's good for a Seattle. Well, that was something to behold there. You might expect runs like that from a kick returner or wide receiver, but that's your quarterback hitting top speed. From midfield now, here's Wilson. He'll find that cap. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Fired that one in there. Able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way that pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it. And he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a new point there is they were able to connect. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Now it's Carson. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. There they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. 
This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. And Myers able to knock it through, and that's going to tie us at 13. So they come away from this opening drive of the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. Let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that will fall incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. On third down, Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook, and they're going to get him down well That's short good. of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. That's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. On third and one, Wilson. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Instead of a third and one run, they go pass and they get 12 yards out of it. At the 50-yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. To the right side, and he's got more complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 42-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. They run it with Carson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Stepping up, he'll try and run. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. This throw complete, Wilson finding Lockett. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. They'll run on first down. It's Carson. He'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. That one goes 
for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. Great call to hand that one off and is running back to the rest. Someone read their keys correctly. And on the defensive side of the ball, they certainly did not because they really essentially were just going to swarm the quarterback. They kind of guessed themselves out of the play. And guess who benefited? The guy with the football. Yeah, after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Now K.J. Osborne. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. The Vikings take over first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. The pass there over the middle to start things out. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. the shotgun. It's Cousins. A hit as he throws there incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. On second down, Cousins again. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Again, it's Cousins. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Now Cousins on fourth down. He's going to take another shot here. And that's caught inside the 35. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. That'll be complete to Cook. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. First down, here's Cousins. Forced out to his... And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And that was Carlos Dunlap who got Here's him to take him down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Throwing on second and long. Cousins looking left side, and it's complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in the balance. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination that when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. 
fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact that a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing them all sorts of trouble. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. Well, to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guy's going down here to catch the ball. They've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play, but if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Well, a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. First down, Minnesota. Here's Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. The Vikings going to signal for their first to their timeouts. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Second and three at their 48-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Cousins. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, I'm no coach, but there's just not time right now for throws that short. Yeah, sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. As Coach Madden liked to say, sometimes you have to take what you want. And this is going to be intercepted. He's able to bring it up five yards shy at midfield to the 45-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense. Defense ready to get this drive underway. They can still get into field goal range, partner. They got to work quickly, though. I agree with you totally. Find a way to get the ball downfield and out of bounds. In a perfect world, they know what hash they want to get to for their kicker, and they already know the distance that he feels comfortable. That'll dictate what they do on offense. See if they can get in his range. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And what an effort on the final play of regulation. All zeros on the clock, and we are headed to OT. How big is that penalty? Wipe out the INT. You'd hate to be the teammate that caused that penalty and wiped out the interception. you got to face that guy in the locker room. Not a lot of fun for you, and you hurt your squad. And it's good. He got it. He missed his long attempt earlier, but he connects when it matters most. And they'll be celebrating in Pioneer Square tonight. The Seahawks have won the game. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did.